The Science Weekly, an industry pundit podcast about the tech and innovation of the 21st century. An open discussion between industry experts to uncover how emerging technologies can help solve current societal issues. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having us in your offices at Digital Europe. Uh, today we have Martina Piazza with us. Um, can you please tell us a bit about what you do here at Digital Europe? Yes, so um, I'm officer for Digital Technology and Innovation Policy on Digital Europe, and I manage members uh, of the Research and Innovation Working Group, uh, dealing with uh, research and innovation uh, policies um, and activities. Well, that's great. Um, and how does this membership uh, look like? How is the structure? Uh, so, um, uh, in Digital Europe, we have a total of 93 international corporations and 39 trade associations. The numbers will always change because we're expanding. Um, these um, members are organized in policy groups, uh, which are currently um, six main ones, and within each policy group, uh, they are organized in working groups which deal with different topics and themes uh, of the different policy areas. And um, wh why do corporates and trade associations feel the need to come together at the EU level? Um, so on research and innovation, uh, corporates and trade associations, they come together uh, to formulate position papers and um, agree on, on international internal policy statements. Uh, basically uh, on the functioning of uh, the funding programs such as the uh, Digital Europe program and the Horizon Europe program. Uh, they also come together in order to build uh, external liaison and networks uh, with other stakeholders um, and benefit from the networking opportunities. Um, then uh, they come together as well to exchange best practices uh, because um, applying for European fundings comes with its challenges and um, exchanging best practices can help um, some of them to, um, um, to overcome the obstacles and to succeed in their applications. What are some of these obstacles that you heard in previous sessions that the, the members have stated? Um, so usually the discussions uh, within the membership always tackle the issue of um, knowledge, uh, the need of knowledge and insights on the different programs and the functioning. There are uh, a lot of opportunities uh, for, uh, um, for fundings and for them to scale up in their projects, uh, but clarity is needed. Uh, so by exchanging uh, on these topics, uh, they uh, come together and uh, um, help each other to navigate in this um, uh, in the funding landscape. Um, another challenge is also um, the fact that um, they, uh, when they build consortia to apply for projects, uh, they need to deal with different uh, organizations and stakeholders. For example, we. Uh, from Digital Europe uh, uh, drafted a model consortium for research, development and innovation actions under Horizon Europe. Uh, this document provides um, a basis for uh, negotiations with academics and other institutions. Um, and this is uh, very useful for them because uh, when they come together and need to agree on a common um, a plan for governance uh, uh, framework uh, and uh, uh, operational aspects of uh, the consortia, uh, they need to have a basis uh, for discussions. Nice. Um, and you also provide, I think there's a lot of funding available for this on the EU level. What are some of the most interesting funding initiatives for industrial research? Uh, so basically what we are um, keeping an eye on is a Horizon Europe program. Uh, which has a total of 95.5 billion uh, euros allocated uh, over different years. Uh, within the digital sector, we are very interested in Pillar 2, uh, for which is allocated more than uh, 53 billion. And this pillar um, specifically deals with global challenges 
and uh, EU industrial competitiveness uh, through clusters of research and innovation uh, in the areas, uh, different areas, uh, such as the digital industry and space. Um, and the other program we are uh, monitoring is uh, the Digital Europe, uh, Europe program with um, 1.98 billion. Uh, the Digital Europe program um, spans from uh, uh, topics which include data, um, data spaces, quantum communication, cybersecurity, uh, and digital innovation hubs. Um, so we keep an eye on both. Um, and specifically within our membership, there is a lot of interest in uh, the Horizon Europe partnerships. Um, the Horizon Europe partnerships are a way uh, for uh, the EU to bring together uh, commission institutional actors, uh, the industry and uh, stakeholders uh, to uh, face and uh, tackle pressing challenges through um, research and innovation initiatives. Um, so a couple of them, we organize exchanges, we bring speakers to our exchanges from, uh, um, from this field and we are having a closer look at uh, three uh, partnerships uh, which are the Key Digital Technology Partnership, uh, the Made in Europe one and the Smart Networks and Services. Um, there are uh, many more others um, and last year in June uh, 21 um, the Commission also adopted a Memorandum of Understanding for um, 11 co-programme partnerships which uh, have a budget of about 8 uh, billion euros from Horizon Europe um, from 2021 until uh, 2030. Um, so a little bit of insight on this uh, partnership. Uh, what we, uh, we try to understand is um, not only the operational aspects um, that, um, that are put in place in order to build this cooperation between uh, private and public actors, uh, but also the topics and that they have to deal with and the calls uh, that they launch. Um, the key digital technology uh, partnership, for example, encompasses electronic components uh, as well as their design, manufacture and integration in systems and uh, software that defines how they work. Um, the Made in Europe one um, uh, tackles uh, basically uh, sustainable manufacturing and aims at um, uh, building a platform to align national and regional uh, manufacturing te technology initiatives. And uh, finally, the, the one that I mentioned, the Smart Networks and Services uh, Partnership, um, aims at helping uh, uh, resolving societal challenges um, and enable the digital uh, and green transitions through um, technological sovereignty for smart networks and services um, and um, in, in this area. So there is a, a lot uh, available, a lot uh, to understand in the funding landscape for research and innovation. Um, and uh, overall, uh, from Digital Europe, uh, we have always advocated uh, for um, the possibility of uh, the industry, but also trade association to, um, uh, to actually um, have easy access and uh, um, but enable, uh, to enable them to apply for these fundings. Um, oh, those, those are great initiatives and there's a lot of great work that you guys are doing in the back, in the back office um, to prepare all this and there's a lot of um, funding available to contribute to all the efforts on research and innovation. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, well, uh, maybe the, our, um, our step forward uh, will be to keep advocating for a balanced uh, allocation of the budget uh, in the upcoming programs uh, back in 2020. Um, 
Digital Europe uh, called the European Council to earmark at least 15% of the funding to digital projects across all programs of the multi-annual financial framework and next generation EU and um, and eventually EU leaders agreed on a 20% uh, of the new recovery and resilience fundings to be allocated to digital investments. Um, so it will be uh, on this line and the building on these uh, great efforts of Digital Europe um, within the research and innovation uh, working group we will keep um, advocating for balanced uh, um, allocation of the budget uh, in the upcoming programs and uh, uh, make sure that there is um, the interest and uh, the, um, the least challenges as possible for the industry to access to such fundings. Great. Um, thank you so much. Um, it was great uh, interviewing you and thank you for all the information that you shared. Thanks to you. Thanks. It was thank a you. pleasure. This podcast is brought to you by Science, former RISE, the research centre of excellence in Cyprus, focusing on interactive media, smart systems and emerging technologies. For more information, please check our website on science.org.cy.